What was that? Obviously something set off the snare trap, but it sounded... big. No, you nincompoop, not like a big rabbit. Something bigger than the biggest rabbit you've ever seen. I don't know, maybe a deer or something? A crocodilly. You mean a crocodile. A crocodile, all the way out here. <sighs> maybe I should really teach that numbskull how to read someday. Okay, maybe it's not a crocodile or crocodilly as you say, but it could still be something dangerous. Boys, draw your weapons and approach slowly. We don't want to scare it. <laughs> Maybe not a deer, but those are some lovely doe eyes. Boys, would you lower your weapons already? How stupid of me to assume that it should just be common sense for you to all put your weapons away. We hunt animals, not people. Miss, I apologise for the rudeness of my comrades. We were just expecting, well, something else. <laughs> no, not a crocodile. Ignore his dim-wittedness. Please. <sighs> Don't struggle. We aren't going to hurt you. Let me just... There. Now you're free. Can you stand? She even staggers like a young deer. Oh, that is a nasty rope burn on your ankle, though. Here, I'll escort you back to our camp. We can bandage that up for you. I know we may just seem like a band of fools, but I promise that my boys can do a real proper rap job on that burn. And we have some pretty good cooks as well. I'm sure you're hungry. Who are we? Oh, oh yes, how silly of me not to introduce myself. I am Ash, and these are my companions. We call ourselves the Princes of Maybury Woods. Well, yes, the name is a bit of a work in progress. Many people refer to us as the Bum Bandits of Maybury. Well, to be quite honest, we aren't the best of bandits, if bandits at all. We're really just some thieves trying to live in peace. Do we break the law at times? Yes. Do we steal sometimes? Also yes. But it has never been with any malintent towards anyone else. We're just looking out for ourselves. Well, most of us here are outcasts of society, or even exiles from other kingdoms. <laughs> I guess that does sound a little bit scary, but... But this band of brothers is one of the most lovable communities you'll ever meet west of Waylona River. What's my story? <laughs> Maybe one day you'll know. Maybe one day you'll know. Now enough about me. How about you, Doe Eyes? What are you doing all the way out here on your little lonesome? Don't tell me. You're the robber on a run from the authorities. You've been exiled from your kingdom for some heinous crime. <laughs> Who am I kidding? You wouldn't hurt a butterfly, would you? So perhaps you're a nymph of some sort. A runaway? <laughs> you're starting a whole new life. You could have told me anything you wanted to and I would have believed you. And you told the truth. How do I know you're telling the truth? Well, I can just see it in those doe eyes of yours. There's nothing but innocence. How can I tell? Let's just say I used to spend a lot of time studying. Yes, it's one of the reasons I seem to have been adopted as some sort of leader for this group of men. You see, many of them are unable to read or write. Growing up, they were much more concerned with working and surviving. Me. Interesting. You flatter me. I think you're much more interesting. So what if I barely know anything about you? I'm quite curious about you, and curiosity is what drives interest. Who says I'm an outlaw? I suppose being the leader of a little gaggle of poor themes would make it seem so. I've been out here with these men for about a month now, but I feel like I've known these people my entire life. Well, to be quite honest, I'm a runaway like yourself. But not many people know that. I tend to keep quiet about my past life. I left it behind, after all. I much prefer it out here. Are you alright? You're wincing and limping. 
the ankle. I suppose it should be quite sore after walking on it all day, and on rough terrain. The canvas is much further from here. Do you think you can make it? <laughs> okay, if you say so. Here, wrap your arm around my neck and I'll support you around your waist. Don't be afraid to put some weight on me. I can take it. Oh dear. You seem to be in quite a lot of pain. Here. I'll just carry you the rest of the way. Uh, I don't mind at all. Just wrap your arms around my neck and hang tight. I promise it won't be much longer. And I still wouldn't mind if you weren't injured at all. You've probably done much running to make it all the way out here. You deserve to be off your feet for a while. Besides, it's been too long since I've had such a beautiful maiden, let alone carry one in my arms. Who says a lowly thief can't be a little bit flirtatious? Is that a blush I see upon your cheeks? Please don't hide, doe eyes. The least you can do is look up at me. Consider it a payment for carrying you all this way. It really wouldn't be a good idea for you to walk. I'll tuck my charm away for now. At least until we get your wounds taken care of. So, little runaway. Where are you running to? Not sure. Fair enough, I suppose. You must be more concerned with where you're running from than where you're running to, then. <sighs> I understand. I'll stop asking questions. Besides, we finally made it to camp. Don't worry, Doe-Eyes. I'm going to get you straight to the medical tent. Here we are. I'll just set you down here. There we go. Just sit back and relax. I'm going to elevate your ankle, okay? Alexander, how are you? Who's this? Well, this poor thing got caught in a snare rope by the creek. She's got a nasty rope burn around her ankle where the trap caught her. You think you can work your magic? Doe-eyes. You're very funny looking up at me like that. It's not real magic. Alexander's medicine is the closest thing to magic I've ever seen in this world. You're in good hands, I promise. Doe, you're giving me a funny look again. What is it? Oh, well, you see... Alexander is a mute. His tongue was cut out for talking back to a priest in his kingdom. I know. Brutal, right? That was many years ago. So it not only hurts him. He has his own way of communicating that we've all picked up on. Right now he's dipping bandages in a paste. He'll wrap your ankle in that. It'll be cold. Huh? There we go. He says he's going to put a layer of dry bandages on top. All done. He says to leave this for three days or so, and you can cut it off and it'll be good as new. Thanks, Alexander. Ooh, that means dinner's ready. You hungry? Go on, then. I'm pretty sure tonight's rabbit stew. You're gonna love it. Hank, the food smells amazing. You think you can spare a bowl for the lovely maiden tonight? Here you are, duh. Make sure you let it cool before you drink it. We wouldn't want to make Alexander fix up another burn for you, would we? Take the seat next to me. <laughs> this may be the best batch of rabbit stew I've ever had. Try it. <laughs> I saw those eyes light up. I told you we had some great cooks around here. I know you all look big and tough. Hank may have a missing eye, but he makes sure everyone is fed every day. Arthur is over there with the missing hand. He lost it while serving in the army. They discharged him, but he didn't have any family to go home to. So he left and found us. Bartholomew is sitting next to that tree over there. He's got scars all down his back, but he's amazing with animals. There's a cat. Somewhere around here that follows him around. So you can see, doe eyes, that even though everyone thinks we're a big scary bandits terrorizing people from town to town, they're wrong. We're not the bad guys, no matter what people want to think. 
We're just a group of people who have nowhere else to go. <laughs> Is that a smile I see on your face? I'm glad to see you smile. You look like you've had a rough day, if not a couple of days. You're more than welcome to stay here for the night. Would you like that? Well, we're happy to have you. Do you have any plans for what you might do or where you might go next? Just following the river. Uh, I guess that makes sense with you getting caught up by the creek then. You're a smart girl, you know that? There's something about you that seems almost familiar, you know? I almost feel like you understand me without even having to speak. You're really easy to talk to. I gotta be careful or else I might end up spilling all my secrets. Is that a smirk, though? <laughs> You're really cute when you look like you want something. What do you want? You want to know my secrets. In time. In time. What secrets are you hiding behind those innocent eyes? I'll never know. Huh? Playing hard to get, I see. Well, I've already caught you once. I'm sure I could catch you again. I have an idea. How would you like to play a game? A game I like to call Two Lies and a Truth. It's very simple. I'll tell you three statements about myself. Two are lies, one is true. And you have to guess which is true. What do you say? What happens if you guess wrong? Well, then I guess you'll never know what's true. Okay. Let me think. Mm. I've got it. I prefer cats over dogs. My favourite thing to study was literature. And I read to children every Sunday. Which is the truth? The first one. That I prefer cats over dogs. Is that your final guess? Sadly, you'd be wrong. That was a lie. Now it's your turn. You studied archery, you have three brothers, and you hate peas. That's a tough list, though. My guess is you hate peas. That was a lie. <laughs> no, you're all good at this. I thought for sure I'd have to tell when you lied. Perhaps I'm not as good at reading people as I thought. My turn again. I served in the army. I have one tattoo. And I have two sisters. What's the truth? I did not serve in the army. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you which one was the truth. Because that's not how the game works. It's your turn. dark out now. How do I not notice? Well, I feel busy looking for your face. It just seems to light up in the dark. Are you shivering? It looks like the bonfire has died down. We should get inside. I wouldn't want you catching a cold. The tent is this way, doe wise. You can grab my hands and I'll guide you. I'll go ahead and let my oil lamp. Yeah, it's not much. But I've got some blankets, pillows. You can feel free to sleep on the small car I set up. I'll just sleep on the floor. I insist, though eyes. I would never ask you to sleep on the cold floor, especially not after the day you've had. <sighs> Let me put it this way. I'm going to sleep on the floor. If you would like to join me, you are more than welcome to but the cot will always be available to you. Would you like them to sleep in? I've got some linen shirts or shorts or... A shirt? Sure, here you go. I'll, I'll turn and close my eyes. Actually, why don't you also turn and close your eyes and I'll go ahead and change as well. Okay, I'm done. You done? Let's turn back around on the count of three. One, 
two, three. <laughs> you beat me to it. How long have you been looking, duh? Not long. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you mind me being without a shirt? I can put one on if it makes you feel uncomfortable. No? Okay, well... I guess there's nothing else to do other than lay down. Good night, Doughwise. Good night again, Doughwise. I wish I could tell you the truth, Doughwise. The truth being that I am a prince. I'm royalty. And I couldn't fulfill my duty. I ran away because I didn't want to marry a girl I'd never met. Especially just for power. And you would never know how the guilt of leaving my family, my subjects, and my royal duty leaves me alive some days. But something in your eyes makes me think that you understand somehow. I've never met someone like you. Meeting you makes me think that I made the right choice. I hope you stick around, but I would understand if I woke up tomorrow and you were gone. Good night, though.